Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's resident lecture. Uh, Stephanie will talk about appendicitis. Uh, she will not talk so much about the clinics, the symptoms, the right lower abdomen pain or the differential diagnosis, but she will give you an update on what topics have been discussed recently, what concepts have emerged in recent years. And yeah, Stephanie, please. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you for the introduction, Michaela. Today, I'm going to give you a brief update on acute appendicitis. And I'm going to talk about the open versus laparoscopic appendectomy, the modern understanding of pathogenesis, and then surgery versus antibiotics. I'm going to give you a brief update on the uh, um, diagnostics. And first, I want to take you back to the past to 1981 when Kurt Sam, a German gynecologist and engineer, was the first one to perform a laparoscopic appendectomy after he had just um, invented and introduced laparoscopic surgery um, to the market. And as you can imagine, for a gynecologist to invent a new um, kind of surgery, his surgeons weren't happy and he received a great storm of skepticism and suspicion among surgeons. But over the, the recent years, over the last 20 to 30 years, laparoscopic surgery and laparoscopic appendectomy became the gold standard um, in the early 2000s. And this is why it was major to uh, um, establish the superiority of laparoscopic versus open um, surgery for suspected appendicitis. And this is a uh, systematic review that was published in 2018 that compared laparoscopic surgery or laparoscopic appendectomy versus open surgery for um, suspected appendicitis. It showed that after laparoscopic surgery, there was less intra and post-operative pain. There was a reduction in wound infections of almost 50%. They had a shorter hospital stay and a quicker return to normal activities. Yet what they showed is that there was an increased incidence of intra-abdominal abscesses. And um, what is not to be underestimated is the diagnostic ability of the laparoscopic surgery. When compared to the open approach, the open approach was only able to diagnose the uh, uh, gynecological disease that was, um, that was there in 17 versus 73%. Last but not least, they showed an improved cosmetic outcome, which is obvious, um, avoiding a big scar. What is far more important, though, is to compare laparoscopic surgery um, for complicated appendicitis. And this is a meta-analysis that was published in Surgical Endoscopy in 2019 that compared laparoscopic appendectomy to open surgery for complicated appendicitis, including perforated appendicitis, generalized peritonitis, and um, an appendiceal abscess. What they were able to show is that there was no significant difference in the rate of intra-abdominal abscesses. Yet, there was a decrease significantly in the overall morbidity, the wound infection rate, and respiratory complications, mostly due to the less uh, post-operative pain. Their secondary outcomes, the mean length of hospital stay and the time to solid food consumption, were also reduced in the laparoscopic group, while the mean operation time was the same. This indicates that laparoscopic appendectomy and complicated appendicitis is a safe method and should be the routine approach. Talking about the modern understanding of the pathogenesis, Bangu and The Lancet in 2015 discussed that although appendectomy or appendicitis with a uh, um, lifetime incidence of 6 to 8 um, percent is a very common disease, the full range of specific causes still remains unknown. The direct luminal obstruction caused by an appendicolith, a tumor, a lymphoid hyperplasia is probably the most understood mechanism, yet does not occur in the majority of cases. They discussed genetic factors, environmental influences, and a probable underlying infectious disease as other causes um, to cause appendicitis. They saw that the risk to get appendicitis was three times higher with a positive family history and it was less common in non-white groups. They saw a predominantial seasonal presentation during the summer and time and space clusters, meaning that at a certain time at a certain place there was a higher incidence of um, appendicitis. In 2007, Livingston from the University of Texas published a um, epidemiologic analysis in uh, Annals of Surgery and they were able to show a disconnect between the incidence of non-perforated and perforated appendicitis. And assuming that perforated appendicitis 
is um, an evolution from um, the uh, non-perforated appendicitis, they would have expected a parallel graph here. And this is the upper line shows the incidence of um, non-perforated appendicitis that is over the last years decreasing, while the line for the perforated appendicitis is slowly but steadily increasing. And they said, um, if we assume that um, uncomplicated appendicitis <coughs> evolves to perforation because it's not treated early enough, there should have been a more parallel, um, a more parallel graph. Back to Bengu in the Lancet, he was discussing that there might be two separate types of inflammation. One being the simple inflamed type that is without gangrene and necrosis that does not perforate, it is a reversible form and can settle spontaneously. The other one being the severe inflammatory type that has a rapid gangrene and thus um, proceed to perforation rather quickly. If we assume that this is true, one might ask the question if antibiotics can be successful in some forms of appendicitis. And this brings me to probably the hottest topic of the recent years, which is surgery versus antibiotics in um, acute appendicitis. And I want to introduce to you the APEC randomized clinical trial that was published in JAMA in June 2015. It was a multicenter non-inferiority RCT, including 530 patients, um, performed by six Finnish hospitals. And what they did, they randomized the patients to a surgical group that received um, open appendectomy with the primary outcome of a successful completion of the appendectomy. The antibiotics group received three days of intravenous ertapinem versus, and then an oral course of uh, seven days levofloxacin and metronidazole. Um, their primary outcome was the discharge from the hospital without the need for surgery within a um, one-year follow-up. The results showed that the surgical group had a 99.6% success rate. The 0.4% that are missing is one patient who had a complete resolution of symptoms um, before they actually performed the surgery. In the antibiotics group, the appendectomy rate um, within 90 days was at 16%. Whereas within one year, 72, uh, sorry, 27% had to undergo an appendectomy for recurrent appendicitis. For this reason, they were not able to show a non-inferiority of antibiotics. Um, just for the records, I want to show you their secondary complications, especially the uh, um, overall complication rate, which was higher in the surgical group, mostly due to surgical side infections. And this is where the major limitations of the study actually lies, because they compared open appendectomy to uh, um, the conservative treatment. And when we know that open appendectomy um, causes more surgical side infections, the question is, why did they not compare laparoscopic surgery to the conservative treatment? And they answered that questions themselves. And they said they wanted a trial that was globally applicable, assuming that not everywhere in the world there was the um, laparoscopic equipment and expertise to perform laparoscopic surgery. Another thing would be that ertapidinam as a broad spectrum antibiotic may not be the first choice when treating appendicitis. In their five year follow up, they had an almost 40% um, failure rate, if you want to say so. Um, because 39% of patients underwent appendectomy within five years, 70% um, of those within the first year of initial presentation. Talking about surgery versus antibiotics, we can't overlook Prospero, which was a systematic review and meta-analysis that was um, published by the group of the University of Heidelberg in Annals of Surgery in May 2017. And they looked at the treatment effectiveness and safety comparing the two options um, for uncomplicated appendicitis. What they saw was in terms of treatment effectiveness that was uh, defined by the success of initial treatment after one year, that all of the RCTs, they included four RCTs and four non-RCTs, were in favor of the operative treatment. Looking at the complication-free treatment success that was defined as an uncomplicated course, no adverse events, no complications, again, all of the RCTs were in favor of the operative treatment. They also discussed two uh, um, interesting factors, one being the risk of carcinomas. And after 1% of appendectomies, we do see a histopathological diagnosis of carcinoma. And given those patients were given antibiotics, 
um, the diagnosis wouldn't have been made or would have been delayed with potential fatal consequences. And the second point being the unnecessary use of antibiotics, especially in a time with the rise of uh, multi-resistant bacteria. They came to the conclusion that surgery for um, appendicitis was the definite one-time only treatment with a well-known risk profile and a high success rate, avoiding recurrent appendicitis after the appendix is taken out. This is um, the newest trial I found, which is a randomized trial comparing antibiotics with um, a petectomy for appendicitis yet. What was very interesting is that they here included subgroups um, divided by the presence or absence of an appendicolith, and that hasn't, hasn't been done before in the previous ones. 96% here received laparoscopic surgery, and the antibiotics group received 24 hours intravenous and then a 10-day oral course, although they did not have a um, specific <coughs> protocol. Um, their primary outcome here was the 30-day health status. And um, that was registered by a quality of life score 30 days after the initial randomization. And at that point, patients reported the same type of, uh, of score, the same type of uh, health status. So they were able to show in that category or primary outcome, they were able to show the non-inferiority of antibiotics. The secondary outcome here, again, was the appendectomy rate. And they did see a 30% uh, appendectomy rate by 90 days. Yet what was interesting is that in terms of when there was an um, appendicolith present, that almost double the patients had to undergo an appendectomy versus the one who didn't have an appendicolith. So assuming there are some um, indicators that actually indicate a failure of conservative treatment, um, we need to look at the diagnostic tools that we have. And um, back in med school, I learned that uh, acute appendicitis was a clinical diagnosis. Then ultrasound came into play, and if in our daily routine we find ourselves with an inconclusive ultrasound, um, it's the question whether we want to run a CT or not, especially in young patients. That's a question if we want to expose them or if we have to expose them to um, radiation. This is a radiological study that looks at the factors associated with an inconclusive ultrasound and the need for additional CT. They um, had around 100 patients, 50 who only received an ultrasound, and then 55 who had to have an additional CT for inconclusive ultrasound. And what they found was that the patient who required a further CT were of advanced age. They had a higher BMI. They had mostly complicated acute appendicitis and an atypical appendix location. There was no difference in the gender, there was no difference in the inflammatory syndrome, such as fever or high inflammation marks, and there was no difference in the hours of imaging, which is uh, work hours versus on-call hours. And um, assuming that there are patients who uh, um, have inconclusive ultrasound, it was the question whether a low-dose CT was feasible um, to avoid uh, uh, high radiation output. And um, the Optipex study published in February 2020 was examining whether a low-dose CT was not inferior um, to a standard CT for suspected acute appendicitis. And what they did, it was actually 60 patients who received a low-dose CT and a standard CT. And um, the low-dose CT was run with 100 kilovolt and the um, standard CT was run with 120 kilovolt. And they were able to show that the low-dose CT was not inferior to the standard CT in terms of diagnostic accuracy and the accuracy um, to actually diagnose the severity of the disease. Obviously, as expected, the mean radiation was significantly lower. Yet, the limitation here is that they only included patients with a BMI of less than 30. And as we learned from the previous slide, that's exactly the patient with a BMI higher than 30 where we need, where ultrasound is mostly inconclusive or can be inconclusive and where we need um, additional um, CT. So now I wanna ask you the question, if, if you guys were diagnosed with an acute appendicitis, would you choose surgery or antibiotics? And in a room full of, of surgeons, I'm gonna ask the questions, um, who would actually go for antibiotic treatment if you were diagnosed with acute appendicitis. If you want to raise your hands, who would go for antibiotics? 
There's two free. <laughs> okay. Do you want to state your reasons or? Did those comparative studies look at the late problems of appendectomy, such as uh, intestinal obstruction? Because it's a very frequent operation, and most intestinal mechanical obstructions occur after uh, surgery. Unfortunately, that due to the fact that these studies are very young for the recent years, there haven't been like very late follow-ups. Follow the only follow-up I have is like a one year, and they did not look at adhesive complications yet. What they do have is, especially in the antibiotics group, um, adverse effects for, for antibiotics, drainage procedures, but in the surgical groups, they did not have uh, adhesive problems yet. Okay, anyways, let me just finish my presentation or go to the conclusion and then we can further discuss. Um, coming to my conclusion, perforated and non-perforated appendicitis may have different pathophysiologies. A low-dose CT is very feasible in acute appendicitis. Antibiotics may be non-inferior to primary appendectomy in subgroups, yet further efforts need to be identified for um, preoperative characteristics. And as of now, appendectomy remains the therapy with a well-known risk profile. It's a one-time therapy and with a high success rate. To end my presentation, I want to show you this quote that is almost 40 years old, was said by the president of the Southern Surgical Association in um, 1982 and published in Annals of Surgery a year later. He said that the history of appendicitis includes examples of great resistance to changing concepts, brilliant but unaccepted early observations, emotional support for unsupportable views, the importance of timing, and finally, the development of a highly satisfactory solution. And although the uh, treatment um, of acute appendicitis has developed dramatically over the last years, I want to say that um, for a daily routine, we still find ourselves, um, or it's still very applicable to what we have to deal um, with today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Stephanie. So yeah, we have heard uh, some news on appendicitis. We have touched on some of the developments, especially uh, this very controversially discussed um, antibiotic treatments for a very specific group of patients. And we always have to keep in mind the inclusion criteria for these trials. So it were rather younger, healthier patients with uh, clearly defined uh, criteria from the CT scan, so no appendicolate, uh, not too small and not too large uh, appendix, and no free fluid, no peritonitis. So it's a very specific group of patients that would qualify for this uh, kind of uh, treatment. And as you said, years ago, appendicitis was a clinical diagnosis um, where not even sonography was accepted uh, before surgery. And nowadays, it's more and more common that we do a CT scan. And with these findings, we can probably triage a little bit more uh, for the treatment that we discuss with the patients. So we are open for questions. Yeah, number one, thank you very much. Very nice presentation of a very common disease. And I see if I conclude that uh, the uh, surgery, the laparoscopy, appendectomy remain the gold standard and the subgroup could be the other one. Thank you very much. Um, excellent presentation. Uh, my point is just that um, with the advent of antibiotics in um, in acute appendicitis, I think that's a great concept actually, and there may be there may be great future for that. But as of today, all societies' guidelines they still stick to the fact that um, uh, operative therapy is the is the um, standard of care. So I would strongly advise um, for all physicians in this room, whenever you see patients with acute appendicitis, when you're on call, do not get yourself involved into lengthy discussions with the patients whether antibiotics may be in this specific case. Uh, advantageous to surgical therapy because simply it is not the standard of care. That's something that needs to be addressed by studies. And maybe a few years from now, we will know which subgroups may um, be treated safely with antibiotics and uh, the others which won't. But for your current practice as of right now, this is not something that we employ in our patients. Thank you.